OK, avatar scene. Do you see me? Yep. And here. All right, good. Welcome to the show, good people. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the essentialists. And today is a very special day because my good friend Levi has a birthday. So we are going to sing for him happy birthday. He's just oh, got one year younger. Yeah. He's not allowed to go into the grown up bars and have a beer because he's a young lad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. And happy birthday, my friend. And we are Thank jumping you. right in because the man has a birthday to celebrate. So, uh, last episode, we talked about kids pretty extensively. And we said that we're going to discuss today more practically about how actually doing it, like, you know, how. Like, you know how you train your kids how you pull your kids in so back to the roots uh levi please continue so how did it happen with shy shay like you just told her you're going to lift kettlebells because of your photo or <laughs> was it something else yeah well i you know originally she was very into dance and it was one of those oh. things where um I said, we're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to do this, we're going to do it well and, and, and right. And you're going to, you know, be in shape and I uh, give your best effort. And so it started off just as training once and twice a week, just as her age was very young. Um, and she didn't enjoy it then. Um, but we did some, just some very basic gross motor skills and tried to lay a foundation and nothing was intense, but uh, something that tried to, to build consistency and a routine. And then as she got older, um, you know, like like all of us, enjoying what we're doing has to be paramount. So, um, you know, forcing her to do things that that she was no longer enjoying, or, or you know, you don't want to have that poor relationship with exercise starting at at, at a young age. And so, um, as she got older, we kind of let her decide how she wanted to pursue exercise, and um, thankfully that was kettlebells and and we started off with just doing your basic um you know the the big six as hard style might refer to it um you know swing clean um and then you know your grinds get up squat and press and then eventually adding in snatching um as her skill got better and then as i started to compete and I'm very grateful that that she took some interest in that. And so we obviously switched over towards um, the GS side of things and, and marathon as well. And, and it really clicked with her and very grateful that we were able to find something the two of us can um, do together and, and both enjoy and, and both had success in. So that's been my experience is, is allowing allowing her to decide uh, what she wanted to do and and then pursuing that and we also saw you know when she was younger we got outside coaching as well it wasn't just me um, mm -hmm. we hired a volleyball coach to help improve her skill and uh, as an example and i said and i'm not teaching her dance and so she had coaches in dance um, as well and um it, she would have uh we if we had better access to gymnastics that would have been an option as well that we would have explored but um that's that's kind of what what's been our experience so the next question uh, will be like we can, uh, you know, argue with our trainees because athletes we coach, you know, you and me can have our disagreement. I can use my authority on you saying that I'm your coach. You chose me. You do what I say, you know, etc. But with our kids, it's getting personal. It's getting emotional and it's really easy to sidetrack. And obviously, you know, like these things happen. Uh, how did you manage that? Um, I, that's good. That's a very good question. Um, I, I think a lot of, you know, um, you know, there's there's the tendency to want to like for me to say something like Shay, you know, people pay me good money to come and and train with me and, and listen to me and there's no reason for you to argue with me because that's just a, a silly position to take or whatever but you know she's an individual and, and she's very intelligent and 
um, you know, it's one of those things where I think if I look back to my experiences and butting head with my dad, um, you know, we both could have taken a different approach speaking of my dad and I. And so I tried to take a different approach with her um, just because she is an individual. Um, we are both individuals. Um, I, I might think that I have the best um, a route for her to take, but there's also like the relationship that you and I have as well, where there is some back and forth. And um, I've learned, you know, so much from you that I've also learned how you also allow me to be an individual as well. And so it's important for me to, if, if I need that um, option to be an individual, then I need to allow her as well. And, and I might know best, just like you know best for me. Um, and, you know, my dad had this, had that same, um, you know, thought as, as he was developed or I was developing under him uh, as my wrestling coach, um, you know, but again, a, a lot allowing her to, you know, we have to make our own mistakes in order to learn. It doesn't matter how, how much we want to protect our children or how much you want to protect me as a coach athlete. Um, it's, it's one of those things where um, you have to let them, you know, not fail, but let them be an individual. And um, that's, that's the most powerful, you know, trial and error uh, way that we can learn and, and adapt and, and move forward from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the hardest thing, the hardest thing for a coach and actually for the friend is saying things that need to be said that are not nice. And good friends know how to tell you like the ugly stuff because they care about you enough to tell you that and not, you know, sugarcoating you. And as a coach, it's often it, it's hard. It's really wow. So as the parents, it's twice as hard. So yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> you know, like in my case, um, so I had one, I have one rule with all my kids. Oh, I never push them because I, like again, it's my philosophy. I don't believe into making them do stuff because eventually, okay, they will listen to me because they have to now. But it's a very quick way to fuck you when they're old, okay? And you cannot tell me what to do. And I don't want it. So my own only rule was you must have an athletic uh, class. Like you must have an athletic something in your annual schedule. I don't care what it is. And you have to finish it like the year through. You cannot quit in the middle, right? Like these are two rules okay this is like it's out of respect it's my money i'm paying this is your choice and you must finish it then when the year ends and you don't like it all right fine let's explore something else so this is how it went and when my son told me that he doesn't want to play basketball after five years I said like it's a shame and but you know it's fine okay so it went kind of this way and um, like, again, in my case, the like, um, I, like we both, yeah, like we practice what we preach. And my kids constantly see us and you, they see you, they see me getting up at five, going to the run at six, coming back, prepping breakfast. So like going abroad for the competition, bringing, you know, like this medal, that medal, it's relevant, but you know, like doing something. So it's always in the back of their hands. And I, off, and I often invite them, like, do you want to? Like, you want to try to? And like, it's when mm. no, no. Like, yeah, like, like you know, it's a, really like, it's, it's an open invitation. Like, if you want, like, if you want to try it, let, let, let's try it. And this is how it went. And uh, I suggested, uh, like, I made a mistake with my daughter she was interested in kettlebell sport and like this is the lesson i've learned that i've made i took it too serious and i begin to really coaching her i completely missing the point that like the place that she was so it's kind of okay no no like now like i don't want to lift kettlebells like 
you want to try it? I don't want to listen to what's it. Okay, you won't be listening to what's like. You like this, you know, girly stuff, some hip trust, and you know the stuff in the gym. She says, okay, yeah, like this is something that I'm, I'm more, more prone to. And um, my son kind of, you know, started with the bicycle. I invited him to spend some time with me. I told him, listen, we can have, like, we can spend time together because for me, like these events that I'm training, are a getaway to fly abroad to sure. take a trip okay to the other town and staying there for the night so it's an adventure so if you want to join the adventure and spend the time with me like you know father son experience okay let's do it like you want bike you want to run and this is something that clicked with my son so i like never pushing him i you know just sending him invitations of the events and like do you want to do it and it's his um call he said yeah i want I said okay but we need to practice for it he said okay so you know it's back to this whole rule that you must pick an athletic event and you must finish if you picked it so it's kind of now slowly plays along and so he asked uh for a um, gym membership he said i want to to, to start lifting weights and I said, like, Very can nice. you, like, yeah, like, brother, can you spare me a dime? Can you give me like 10 bucks to go to the gym with my friend? I said, nope, nope. I said, why? Like, because I don't trust you and your dumb friends to show you how to lift weights. <laughs> okay. Like, I see it like too many times and too ugly times in my gym with yeah. like good kids that think that they know stuff and they kill like absolutely like they're killing themselves like uh, but and they won't listen and so i said you know what you're coming with me i'm going to show you like and like you're going to work out and as you said with the teacher for shay like i know that the initial tutelage if they really get in the gym i will ask my friends who are personal trainers like Here's my kid. Here's the money. Deal with it. Good luck. It's your headache now. Okay. Like, do this phase because I'm their father and I want to stay their father. Okay. It's not the right time for me to become the coach yet. So, like, you no, know, do it. Okay. And I believe this is a very correct uh, job because also it teaches the kids that you cannot DIY everything. And if you DIY everything, yeah. OK, which is out of your expertise, right? Like again, not in our case, but still, OK, we are humble enough to understand that okay, it's better sometimes to give it to somebody else that they can look up to. And they take it for life later on, ask help and seek professional advice and saying, you know what? There are people who are really, really better in some stuff than I do. So why wasting my time? And you know, so okay, let's communicate. Yeah. And we both know that saves a lot, money, time, etc. So this is as far as uh, training kids. Now we are going to move uh, to the very interesting topic, the video that we've talked about. So there is a podcast that released this video that it would went viral about 9 million, 9 million views about fit and fat. So you have like three or four like buffed dudes, okay, AKA fit, and four fat, eh, okay, to some extent individuals. They were talking about, you know, the benefits or fit and fat and what is better and what is worse. And I would because like and people watching it and people taking sides and I would like to talk about it like you know from our like perspective and maybe like presenting people you know like the other um the other angle to look at you know those videos so the mic is yours what do you think about what went on there uh yeah, that video was was definitely very interesting. I I did watch the whole thing. Um, I I can't remember. You know, it it would be easier to follow along with you know the questions if I had the questions in front. Um, depending on, but the overall, um, you know, fit versus fat. Um, it was kind of a social 
commentary for those that haven't seen it. Um, as, as someone who, who grew up very um, medically obese, um, by definition, um, it, you know, it, it's something that, that I, I do take um, seriously and, and um, I'm passionate about to, to be able to, and, and thankfully to be able to change my life around, um, you know, after the passing of my dad. And it's something that I've talked about um, you know, a, a lot. And so not to get into a lot of detail, but, um, you know, speaking from my own personal experiences, um, which is, are really, it's such an individual, um, and, and you could, you could hear in the voices in the conversation, how passionate they are about on, on both ends. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I truly believe, I truly believe that, um, there, there's only one option, um, from there's a responsibility for everyone to take care of themselves. And it's not about, oh, it's my body, my choice. No, it's, it's really in this, world how we share things um you know we, we sh shut down the entire world not that long ago uh, to to care for people that were as it turned out obese and elderly and um you know we had to you know compromise our lives and, and shut down businesses and and lock kids in homes and shut down schools and like i don't i mean we all experienced it it's not like we have to it's fresh in our memories and um, <laughs> yeah you know if everyone if everyone did their part and just took care of themselves. Um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had the, the experience what we experienced. And the sad thing is, in my opinion, as we've all gotten to the other side of that and how little has actually changed, you know, th there's no, there's, there's less personal responsibility now than there was before. And, um, it seems like people have just doubled down and the divide has gotten wider. Um, so for those that took care of themselves beforehand and saw the value, in in doing that are you know firmly implanted you know on their side and, and those that survived based on um restrictions of others and uh, um you know good fortune have decided that no i i got through it or i i guess i can't speak for them but it, it seems like they're thinking oh i got through it so why do i need to change you know and and i just had a presentation earlier this week, uh, two days ago with a local high school um, here talking about the U.S. Um, and, and how much money we spend on health care, on uh, treating and preventing complications tied directly to obesity. And um, it really is a shared burden across across the board. And so it's not really my body, my choice at this point. It's um, if, if you're going to eat yourself to deformity, and eat yourself into illness, you are now affecting everyone, not just yourself and your immediate family, you're, you're affecting everyone through shared health uh, healthcare costs. And it becomes a huge economic drain. And that doesn't mean you're a bad person, you know, it means you're selfish, but we're all selfish to, to some extent. And, and so we need to, you know, just make sure that I, I guess, Again, looking at it from my perspective um, and what I experienced, I didn't like myself when I was heavy. Um, I, I didn't have, am I more valuable? I mean, in my opinion, yes. Doesn't mean that you have to share my opinion, you as an individual, but um, I, I, do, I do feel that I add more value, um, not only to my family because I'm healthier, I'm fitter, um, I, I can do more things, I can provide and easier because everything in life is easier when you're stronger um, you know and, and healthier um so yeah i do think that i provide more value um i i've, I've got more assets to, to provide um i can i can do more things i can i can experience life in a whole new way um, i don't have to rely on others especially the government um to to meet my needs or, or take care of me and so I, I do believe in, in, in my definition of adding value, that is more valuable. It doesn't mean that, again, that a person has to share my opinion or on, on the definition of what that means, but um, that's just kind of where I'm, you know, where, where my mindset is. And, um, you know, morally, am I a better person? Not, not necessarily, um, but I, I do think that um, it's our responsibility as humans sharing this planet that we all take care of ourselves 
And that doesn't mean you have to look like, you know, in the video that that massive bodybuilder or Greg Doucette or or anybody that was on the fit side of things. Um, but we all have to do our part and take some personal responsibility of what we're doing. Absolutely. Uh, no, it's interesting. I would like to expose a bit, you know, broader view. And you've mentioned responsibility. And this is to me uh, like the key element because. First of all, a, it's very interesting, but the definition of health does not exist because this is something that can be arguable and almost undefiable. Like, what is healthy? Like, blood work? Like, if I have a good blood work and I'm fat, am I healthy? Okay, if I can deadlift 300 my body weight, three times my body weight, does it make me healthy? but I have a little bit of cholesterol, like, so yeah. you can really go, yeah, and you can go lost, but eventually it's, you know, government decides some guidelines, okay? So again, we are, you know, decided some guidelines about, you know, what is the margin? And what was like, I was listening to the show and it was obviously, you know, it's it's the same old headbutting again, like, it was, you know, Christians against the world, and now it can be Jews against Palestinians, Palestinians, and it can be, you know, gay versus straight. But there wasn't really too much, like what I was missing. I was missing about talking about, you know, happiness and talking about the broader picture. Why? Okay. Like where this long lifetime span. OK, came from. Why and when does living up to my 90s or 100s became equivalent to happy? Because how about me living up to my 40s or 50s? OK, as an example, but experiencing more, feeling more, you know, living more and, you know, dying, you know, filled with content because there are people who lived for 100, like, 100 years and they experienced almost none and you have 30 years old kids now 40 year old kids that have experienced almost everything that this life has to offer so where does it leave us you know like, like like this is what i really was about happiness and you know back to responsibility i feel you and i absolutely agree because you are a taxpayer i am a taxpayer and you're saying, okay, like, dude, if you're eating yourself, like, if you like to eat and you like, like, this lifestyle, be my guest, it's a free world, like, you know, have fun. But, you know, but I, why do I need to pay and you, okay, for your health care? So if you want to play that game, okay, please be responsible of paying for that game that you want to play. And on the same scale, I can put any quote unquote fit guy, okay, who shoots drugs and then his liver fails. And then you and yep. I as taxpayers must pay for the fit guys too, because they're on welfare. And about bringing value to life and to society, they're absolutely valueless. All right. Yeah, no, you're and absolutely right. Okay. And let's talk about fat guy, like obese guy, who has a school, who teaches, you know, kids for free, like who has money, inherited something, and he teaches kids for free from poor family, families, giving them, okay, a brighter future, a chance to become somebody's society. So he's a fat, he's living on welfare, like I am paying for his medication and you, okay, with our taxes, but he brings so much value that. You see, like where like this gray area is missing for me in these videos. And yes, they're viral because people love to see other people dig in other people, you know, garbage and yeah. going through their laundry. But this broader uh, sense of what is like, you know, really fat or what is really fit and what makes you happy, because if you're eating yourself, or like stuffing yourself because you have some 
OK, you know, like issues with your uh, self image and self confidence. It is the same as a guy who works out in a gym, building muscles with or without drugs because he has the same symptoms. OK, he thinks he's not enough, so he's trying to compensate. So they both. OK, we're talking about a same person eventually. OK, we're talking about same thing. So. Like, let's talk like more interesting about why. Are like, I don't know, like government this, you know, I don't know, like this conspiracy, I don't know, like this uh, Templars tribe or whatever, this secret community of super rich people or aliens, why they're trying to divide us. OK, why are we going, you know, sliced more and more? OK, you like into like, you know, like the small divisions of people where we are easily broken and we are easily controlled because we are not united. Right and like so these are the questions and there are like there are no answers here. As I said, I really would like to impose this various angles. OK, for people when they watch these videos, OK, try to imply this critical thinking, thinking, looking at these guys, thinking, guys, like you're talking about, like you're both the same. Like each one of you took it to extreme. OK, and bodybuilders consume the same amount of food. OK, so if we want to talk about global <laughs> warming and over food consumption, OK, these guys eat. And they eat huge amounts of meat on proteins, etc. The same. So come on, okay. But why nobody is talking about that? And it's only this visual appearance of all right, like, oh, if you look that, then you like automatically. This is how prejudice is born. And this is how eventually all the wars, okay, all the political and not political associations coming because you are just learning to visually okay if you're a Jew you're automatically this if you're Catholic you're that if you're a Protestant you're that if you're Puritan you're that okay if you're black you probably that if you're Muslim you probably go like and we don't hear like we don't even give a chance okay for like really this more in-depth and interesting discussion so and I believe this is a good place to leave the people who watch and listen to us to think for themselves. OK, and I'm going to put the link for the show for for people who haven't seen it. All right now, after you heard us, like look at it again, like see it again, listen and OK, get to your own conclusions. And we will get to our own and yeah. Take responsibility and create value, as you said, my friend. And like eventually, like this is the mantra. Like every time you, I wake up, is like how to multiply the amount of good in this universe. Like how can I contribute, regardless, fat, fit, gay, straight, Jew, black, whatever. How can I contribute to the benefit of all? And by the way, speaking about raising our kids, like my kids now, like when I walk in the street. Like I take it personally when somebody threw some garbage on the pavement, it makes him crazy. So I cannot clean the whole planet. But if I walk through something and I see it, I just bend over, I pick it up, I take it to the garbage can. All right. And this is and like my kids now copy me like the little ones. They oh, like people don't care, but they take care of the planet and she picks up something and she carries it to the garbage because. Like this is the like, you know, thinking about this stuff, OK, helping some elderly woman, OK, with the groceries. Without her being frightened that you're going to rob her, OK, like. These are the basic and it's regardless how you look. And how much money you have. Yeah. And with that, good people, we are leaving you to think. And this is an amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an amazing thing. Try it. OK, thank you. Thank you, Levi. Happy birthday again. Thank Go you. and celebrate. I'm going to drink for you yeah. today. Not that Sounds I need good. a reason to drink. I'm Russian after all. OK, here we go. But, <laughs> <laughs> but now today yeah. I have a good reason to do so. 
So thank you. I'll be seeing you next week and we'll be seeing you all next week. Good people. So take care yes, sir. and goodbye.